All right, we are now being joined by Kiefer Crosby. What's up, everybody? Kiefer, you just already you already uh, told us how you're feeling. You're feeling hungry. W- what is the hunger? You just want you trying to get back in the wind calm, trying to compete again. I was talking about pizza. I'm fucking starving. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I am trying to get back in the, in the wing column. The last fight wasn't a loss. It was a no contest, in my opinion. I didn't lose that fight. So, I mean, I haven't really been beaten in a professional fight. Um, so I'm just looking forward to winning it again, to be honest. Hopefully, you don't get any little cuts that the doctor is going to stop this time. But this time, I'm not going to get touched, I don't think. So I'm looking forward to just getting in there and getting the job done, yeah. And you're repping your home country there, but I know you did most of your camp here in the United States, right? Can you talk about that move? And, uh, and no, I didn't. I came here only two weeks ago, to be honest. I went to Connors fight, and then I floated up to Kansas to my friend James Gallagher, and then I did a bit of training with James Krause and his boys up in glory. It was a great gym, great people. And, uh, yeah, no, but I don't, I don't do camps per se, you know what I mean? I just do a bit of training. And then when I organize a fight, I ramp it up. But the majority of my training is in Ireland, to be honest. I've been training... You know, for years in Ireland and the past eight months in Ireland. I'm only here two weeks, so my majority of the camp has been in Ireland. Gotcha. And, you know, those two weeks that you were here, though, is, is that a tough mental adjustment to be away from home and kind of be, you know, in, in a different place with different people, stuff like that? Yeah, kind of. Like, do you know what I mean? Obviously, I have a girlfriend and kids at home, and I'm missing them terrible, do you know what I mean? But I'm in military mode at the minute, you know what I mean? I've been looking up a lot of, like... Um, like documentaries on the military and soldiers and how they go abroad and fight wars on end. And when you see these videos of soldiers coming back into the airport, you know what I mean? They see their kids for the first time in fucking a year and a half, you know what I mean? 12 months after fighting wars, it's, it's crazy to look at that, you know what I mean? And we're lucky that we don't have to do that, you know what I mean? That's intense. They're going halfway across the world and they're in the trenches fighting actual wars and leaving their family at home, but they're fighting them wars for their family. And I feel like I'm doing the same over here. I had to come off to America early, focus on myself, be selfish, you know what I mean? And just knuckle down and nothing else matters other than the gym and my rest. And that's what I, I, that's the frame of mind I kind of tapped into for the past few weeks, to be honest. You know what I mean? I put the head down, nothing else matters but this fight. You know, I got into focus mode. I had to make them sacrifices and uh, I feel like this is the best version of me because you're not at home and there's fucking babies hanging out with you and you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's doing things with the kids. It's great, but it's, it's energy consuming, you know what I mean? So for the past three weeks or so, I've literally just been selfish, you know what I mean? I've just been going to the gym, going home and resting, napping. Fucking nap, I haven't had a nap ever in my life, you know what I mean? I, didn't know. I don't know myself now, having all these naps and uh, getting good night's sleeps and waking up the next day feeling energized to go back to the gym, training, you know what I mean? And uh, I think it's gonna, you'll see a big difference on, on Saturday night. I'm well primed and rested and ready to fight. Hey, Kiefer, right here. This might be a bit of an odd question, but is there a particular difference between fighting in front of an American crowd compared to a European one? Um, no, I don't care, to be honest. You can put me in a bleeding car park and I'll fight. You know what I mean? I don't care. <laughs> it's, it's, it only really matters to the fans, I think. You know what I mean? When they're, like, there's no crowd in the world like an Irish crowd. You know what I mean? Um, and if you can fight in there, you can fight anywhere. It's, that's... That's the, the mecca in my, in my eyes of fighting, you know what I mean? When you go into the tree arena on fight night and it's packed out and we're fighting on the card, it, there's nothing like it. So I, don't, I, I am, like, this is great. I was only talking to someone a minute ago about the Forum Arena. It's um, such an iconic arena. I was only looking at uh, the last dance the other night with M. Michael Jordan. And uh, through the documentary, the fucking the forum came on it, and he was playing the LA Lakers in like a, a big final of uh, a basketball game. And I was like, "Fuck!" It just hit me. I was like, "I'm fighting here in four days. That's mad." You know what I mean? So uh, it's it's uh, it's an iconic arena, and I'm very proud that I'm actually getting out to, to come out here and represent my country and fight in such an iconic place. And there's going to be eighteen thousand people, and it's going to be mental, but. At the end of the day, when you step into that cage, I don't give a shit who's outside that cage. My only concern is the man in front of me, and and it doesn't really matter. It's all just noise at the end of the day, and noise doesn't come into competition. Do you know what I mean? Outside noise is just outside noise. Um, Booing, cheering, supporting, doesn't matter. You know what I mean? My, My goal is to win a fight. And there's only one man that I'm interested in beating. That's the man in front of me. I don't care about anyone else outside that cage, you know what I mean? Until afterwards, and then I can party with everyone. But uh, <laughs> for the 15 minutes, it's going to be focused on him, and that's it. So it doesn't really matter where it is, you know what I mean? 
When you're up against a veteran like Georgie, where do you even begin in terms of like studying his game, watching the tape and everything? Because there's obviously a lot of footage out there on him already. I haven't watched one bit of footage. <laughs> I haven't watched any, to be honest. What do your coaches let you know about him? They just focus on me. Like they, they know me too well. I, you know, I've been in this situation so many times that I've had pullouts, I've had changes of opponents, I've had last minute pullouts, I've weighed in, and then the opponent has changed. I've been here, so I've re I've realised over the my experience in, on my career that like anything can happen. You know what I mean? He could pull out today, and then what? I'm not studying him for fucking 10 weeks and focused on him and uh, sparring partners were to replicate him and now I'm fighting a six foot two southpaw toy boxer or something. You know, it's, I don't give a shit to be honest. <laughs> you know what I mean? He can do whatever he wants to do. I'm focused on me and that's it. And I believe that's the I mean, it, all it is is self-defense. If I'm walking down the street and someone attacks me, I'm not going to say, wait, ho hold on. Are you a black belt in jiu-jitsu? Are, are, are you southpaw? Can you, you know, give me a few minutes to study a tape? No, I'm going to fight. I'm going to defend myself. I'm going to knock him out. So that's my mentality going into these fights. Do you know what I'm saying? And uh, I carry that with pride. I think people get too caught up in the opponent and this and that. The only thing that, like, stands out in my mind is people keep saying his experience and he's had so many fights. And the more experience equals the more damage. You know what I mean? I'm fresh. I've never been hit. I've been hit a little bit. I've never been hurt per se, I've never been knocked out in the gym or in a fight, I'm coming in here fresh as a daisy, ready to go, I don't give a fuck who it is, to be honest. Uh, finally for me, very important question, what kind of pizza are you looking forward to eating? <laughs> <after the laughs> All fight? of the pizza, oh man, there's more than pizza on my mind, you know what I mean, LA is, it seems like a good spot for a bit of food, so, um, you know what I mean, I can't wait to just get out and go on the munch after this fight, yeah? <laughs> <clears throat> oh yeah, Z pizza. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I'm dying for a bit of grub, yeah. Don't so I've been money. asking. Sorry, I've been asking all the fighters um, their opinion about the big sports news right now is Simone Biles withdrawing from the Olympics um, due to mental health issues. I'm not sure if you heard about it or if you have any thoughts on that or if you've ever experienced that kind of issue yourself. I hope she's okay, and everyone should too. I think it's ridiculous how just because somebody has a, a name for themselves that people think they can slander somebody or, or put them on blast like that, it's ridiculous. And um, people should have a little bit more compassion, especially for people in this sport. I don't think people even fucking realise how difficult it is to get into the position she's in or the position we're in. And if you have mental health issues and people actually have you know what I mean, what's in them to go on to the likes of social media and slander somebody and put them down and say negative things will fuck them people. Do you know what I mean? That is ridiculous. And uh, that goes across the board, not just for her, but anyone in that situation. Mental health should be taken serious. And it should be an early thing that, uh, you know, if you write something negative about some of men mental health issues online, you should be banned completely. Your device should be shut down. You know what I mean? But fuck them people. Do you know what I mean? They, they're not nice people. They're not real people. They're just fucking... They have more problems than you have, you know what I mean, writing shit like that, so I hope she's okay, and anyone mental health issues, you know what I mean, I hope they're okay, and it's hard, this, listen, sport's hard, and when you get to the highest level, you don't even realise how difficult it is, do you get me, so, I mean, it's just, it's a weird one, yeah, we live in a weird time with all this social media shit, people think that what they say is so important and relevant, it's not, you know what I mean, it's just ridiculous, man, I hate seeing shit like that, but it is what it is, I suppose, nothing you can do. Thank you. With a crowd of about 18,000 people here in Los Angeles, California, how do you feel that changes the energy and pace of this fight? <clears throat> uh, it won't change the fight whatsoever, but, you know, it's, it's going to be nice to actually, like, I mean, look, the year we're at the having, yeah, <laughs> with this corona shit, you know what I mean? It's been crazy, and, um, you know, a few months ago, we couldn't even, like, walk into a supermarket without people not being, you know, wanting to touch you and shit, and now it's going to be 18,000 people drunk, having fun, buzzing, you know what I mean? So, from that to this is crazy, um, and I mean, like, I'm in America now where things are a little bit more loose and relaxed. Back in my hometown, my, my country of Ireland, shit has gone crazy again, you know what I mean? The government, you know, you can't walk indoors now without a vaccine passport and all this bullshit. And again, I think that's ridiculous. All of this stuff is ridiculous. You should give people the choice in the matter. 
Do you know what I mean? Air lies are own, but you shouldn't be forced to take no vaccine or anything like this. If you want to take it, you take it, that's fine. But if you don't, that's fine also. Open the place back up. Let's get back to normality. An actual bit of normality would be nice. Do you know what I mean? Open shit back up. This is ridiculous at this stage. It's like, I mean, I'm literally about to fight in front of 18,000 people. And then I have to go back to Ireland and I can't go to a restaurant with my family. You know what I'm saying? I have to sit outdoors where Ireland's fucking raining and shit. It's just ridiculous, man. The government in our country is, is corrupt and it's just... It's not even a government. It's like a fucking organisation. It's like a business. And they're running it into the ground. And it's a shame, to be honest. Because I love my country. Yeah, I love Ireland to all my heart. And it's a shame to see how it's gone. And hopefully it can be resolved and we'll get back to normality and, and get this shit behind us. Do you know what I mean? Because it's getting dragged out now to bits. Hey, you say you stay ready. You said you don't have a fight camp, really. You, you know, don't know much about your opponent. Is that why you're able to beat people in so many different ways? You have elbows, you have punches, I mean, submissions. Yeah. Is that why you're able to just change it up on the spot instead um, of being tunnel vision on sort of a game plan? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, in my opinion, you have to be. You know what I mean? This is not like, you know, the back in the day where you're just a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and that's that's it, you know what I mean? You go in there and you just that's your antidote to the, you know, try to take them down, try to break their arm, that's it. You know, you have to be well-versed in all of the skills. You can't just go in here and be a one-trick pony. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not a kickboxer, I'm not a grappler, I'm not a wrestler, I'm a mixed martial artist and I pride myself in that. And the work I put in is, is serious, you know what I mean? And I pride myself in that also. I'm a student of the game forever. I've been studying for years and I've been practicing for years and... I mean, I'm asked the most amount of questions in the room when I'm in the room. I'm, I'm there early, I leave late, I'm always looking for hard rounds, hard, you know. I'm always trying to just get better and better at everything. So when you're put in a situation in a fight, I mean, you have to be able to fight everywhere. You can't just fight one, you know, one place. So as I said, it's, it's basically a matter of practicing self-defense under the bright lights. You know, we, we call it a fight, but it's just basically martial arts to me. And... Uh, I believe that I've ticked all the boxes and I had to fight everywhere. And that's the way I did. As I said, like, it's no offense to any of my opponents. I just don't care, to be honest. I really don't. I think people get too focused on the opponent. And really, they should put all the focus on themselves. You know what I mean? And that's, that's just my mindset. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. I don't know. But I haven't been beaten in a professional belt yet. So I must be doing something right. <laughs> For those American fans that are not familiar just yet with you and your work, what do you want to show the American audience about the kind of fighter that you are? Excellent martial arts. That's what I want to, you know, I want to go down in history as one of the best fighters of all time. You know what I mean? Someone asked me about belts and shit like that. I don't give a shit about belts or anything like that. That's too, again, that's all, you know, diamonds and noise and shit. I don't care. I just want to be one of the best. 50 years from now, I want people to be looking back at my fights being like, he was one of the best. I find myself looking at, you know, Muhammad Ali highlights on YouTube and, you know what I mean? Like, I was looking at uh, Pernell Whitaker the other day on YouTube and I was looking at all these old school fighters, you know, and I just, I'm still in awe of how great they were. Do you know what I mean? I was looking at uh, Prince Nazim, Hamed, remember him? You know what I mean? Roy Jones, you know, I was looking at all these crazy highlights and just being like, well, that's forever. And I don't know how many wins and losses they've had. I don't know how many belts they won. I don't care about all that. I just want to watch excellent fighting. You know what I mean? And when I watch it, I'm like, wow, they are like some of the best fighters of all time. And I look at Hoist Gracie, you know what I mean? In the first UFC, I look at that and I'm like, fuck, that's, that's forever. Do you know what I mean? No one knows what his record is or cares. It doesn't matter what his record is. You look at that and you're just fucking in awe of what he's done and how he's done it. And his, it, uh, you know what I mean? The fights. and That's my mindset in this. You know what I mean? I want to just keep competing, keep fighting, rack them all up. Because at the end of the day, it's not going to last forever. You know what I mean? It's going to be over one day for all of us. You know what I mean? Life is short. So you have to just go out there and do it and put the work in. And, and hopefully when I'm retired and I'm old and I'm fat and I'm fucking sitting there with my feet up, I can, I can be actually happy that I've, I've done what I said I wanted to do and be one of the best fighters, you know what I mean? Definitely one of the most exciting. I'm only 10 fights in and I'm one of the most exciting fighters already. I'm only 10 fights in. This bloke has four times the amount of fights than I have and I'm a bigger name than he is and I'm f far more exciting than anyone, you know what I mean? So, and I'm only 10 fights in, so I just want to triple that nearly, more, you know what I mean? Just keep racking them up. And they uh, just keep going out there and performing excellent martial arts, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so coming up on November 2nd, your boy is going to be fighting. And you kind of just mentioned that Ireland's still in a weird state. So 
knowing that you might come out without any bumps or bruises, would getting on that card be on your radar? Oh, I'm 100% on the card. They're not going to come back to my hometown of Dublin, Ireland and not have me on the card. That's criminal. Do you know what I mean? That's not even a question. Not even going to ask me that. I'll be there fighting somebody. Whether it's in the cage or outside the cage, I'll be there fighting. I can guarantee that. <laughs> and out of all the gyms you could have gone to, what attracted to uh, going to James Krause in Kansas? Well, my friend James Gallard has been training out there for a while now. Um, he came here about maybe a year ago and all this COVID shit happened in Ireland. And he's been asking me to come out. And I was going to go, you know, way sooner. It was just, again, visa issues and all that kind of stuff. Um, and again, I trust James, you know what I mean? I trust his input, and he's been telling me, like, trust me, come out here, some great bodies, great people, James Krause is a great guy. And obviously, I'm a fan of James Krause, you know, before I met him, I seen his fights in the UFC, and I seen him in the corner, and I was like, wow, he's a really good coach, you know what I mean? And as soon as I met him, we started training, it was like I just knew him forever, do you know what I mean? It was like we just literally trained the first day we met, and uh, we done like five fives of, you know, grappling and stuff, and, we, he, he held pads for me, he gave me some good advice, and I was like, wow, he's just a good person, he's a good man, and he's a great martial artist. We just hit it off, and uh, yeah, he took me into the gym, introduced me to his, his team, and they were all so humble as well. Humble killers, that's what I was calling them, do you know what I mean? They're all so nice, very helpful, but they're fucking killers as well, and I learned a lot, to be honest. And it was nice to do that, you know what I mean? Before the fight, I know people were like, oh, it's a bit bogey going to a new gym a couple of weeks before the fight, but to be honest, Fighting is basically like, you know, you have a, if you look at it from a new side perspective, it's like, I don't know my opponent and we've never trained together before. And here we are now live fighting each other and we're just trying to figure each other out in the moment with dire consequences. He's trying to either knock me out, take me down, submit me and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the same. But we don't know what we're going to throw at each other. So we're trying to figure it out. And when you go to a new gym and you have all these new people, well, that's exactly what it is. They don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't even know if he's a wrestler, if he's going to be a southpaw. But you have to figure it out on the spot. And it was refreshing to do that, training with new people that are at a high level. Do you know what I mean? So it was, it was nice. Because normally you get into a, a routine with your teammates in the gym that know you inside out. And me and James have been training, say, together nine years. You know what I mean? So when we roll, it's kind of like he knows my go-tos. I know his go-tos. We know each other, you know. They can kind of cancel each other out a little bit. I have to watch you for certain things. I know what he's going to try to do. Likewise, in the new gym, you don't know. You have to be on the ball. You have to be switched on. You have to be ready for anything. And that's what a fight is. So it was nice to do that, you know what I mean? So I got, I got great training out there, yeah. And one of the fighters from there is Tim Elliott, who recently uh, grappled with Patchy Mix at High Rollers. It's this yeah. cannabis-infused tournament. I don't know if that's something that you and your homeboys would ever want to visit or maybe even participate in. We were there. That's where I met um, James Krause. The, so the day before that match, we actually met in the High Rollers um, gym, and we trained there. But I'd love to do that, yeah? Smoke a few blunts and then smoke a few fills. That would be nice, yeah? <laughs> and they, they pay you they pay to do that as well, grappling, right? They did No? Uh, a pound away, that's even better. <laughs> How you doing, man? Uh, just want to get your take uh, on the main event, Pitbull versus uh, McKee. How do you see that fight playing out? Yeah, good fight, yeah. Long time coming. I don't know, to be honest. It's one of them fights I don't know. I'm normally very like, oh, this isn't, it can go either way. I don't know. I can see a five-rounder, to be honest. I can see a five-rounder and it being close, and it can go either way. That's what I see, yeah. Which uh, Nazim Hamed fight did you end up watching? Just the highlights, you know, I was watching oh. all of them. It was like a highlight of like all fights throughout the years, you know what I mean? Him, just, like, he had a mad career, him. He's mad, you know what I mean? Like when you watch, when you, you forget nearly sometimes how good he was. You're like, fucking yeah. the footwork on him and the elusiveness and how he was just so confident in these fights and how he just knocked people out with shots that you sh shouldn't be able to knock people out with. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, he's, my, he's very impressive, yeah? I remember I was a fan of him when I was a, a little kid, and then you, again, you, you, you move on, and years later, you forget nearly to look back. Pernell Whittaker, same thing. People don't even know who he is when you talk about boxing. When you go back and watch him, he was before Floyd and all this kind of stuff about the defensive boxing, and his head movement, and his footwork, and his traps, and his counter punches. And when you watch that, you're like, wow, man, he's under the radar. People don't even know his name, but he's so good. There's so many people like that, you know what I mean, that interest me. And again, as I said, I want to cement my name as one of the best. Do you know what I'm saying? I want people to look back in years to come and be like, study me. Do you know what I mean? Like, wow, he was, he was impressive. That was a, that's excellent martial arts. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, uh, you mentioned Purnell and... Uh, and um Nazim, they're both very, like, kind of fluid, you yeah. know, a lot of hip movement, a lot of footwork. Is that, do you 
mimic your style like that yourself or is that I mean, you're just a fan of that style yeah no I'm just a fan of all styles to be honest I try to take something from everything do you know what I mean any style like obviously I grew up on Tyson Tyson's like my idol do you know what I mean when I was a kid and he was the number one person for me and still is to be honest I just love Mike Tyson do you know what I mean he's a great fighter and uh, true when I was a kid growing up watching him it was just like I, everything, we were all in awe do you know what I mean of watching his fights you'd never not be jaw dropped when you're watching him because you just know it's like throwing a bleeding human into a lion's den and just like, right, this is going to be mental. You know what I mean? It's going to be crazy. And that was my favorite thing about watching him, just the excitement. And even now you watch his old highlights, it's like hard to believe how he just like, like walked through people. You know what I mean? At a high level. And the Trevor Berbick fight, you watch that fight and you're just like, shit, like Trevor Berbick was the champion. Mike Tyson was, what, 19? And went in and just dismantled him in one round. <laughs> it was like, it's hard to believe nearly, do you know what I mean, that he done that. And I, I always envision myself being like that, you know what I mean, like a destroyer nearly in a fight, you know what I mean, just going in there and this is a fight, this isn't, this isn't playing here. You know what I mean, going in here to kill and this is it, it's me or him, do or die, you know what I mean, it's kill or be killed. And I love that mentality that he had and obviously his elusiveness for heavyweight and, all of that. I just I take something from everything. You know what I mean? I'm just I'm just a fan of of fighting in general and martial arts, and I try just watch everything and study everything and, and take a bit of inspiration from everyone. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I mean, Pacquiao's getting on a bit, isn't he? A little bit old, but he still seems to be sharp as fuck. Um, but again, it's another fight that could go either way. I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I mean, obviously, you'd like to see Pacquiao do it because it's Pacquiao. He's a nice guy, but Spence is on that stage now where it's going to be very hard to beat him. He's a beast. He's a, he's a beast, you know what I mean? So, again, it could, I don't know. Boxing's a weird one as well. When it goes to decision, who knows what's going to happen, right? It's like, I think it's a bit bogey, all the decisions and stuff these days. But that's something I'm going to be down as well at this fight into the professional boxing world, yeah? There's a few people that, that need a hiding in this boxing world, and I'm definitely... Definitely gonna be jumping in there and dishing out a few hoods, and so that's something that interests me big time. Since we're doing Keith Crosby's boxing pick show right now, <laughs> how do you see the how do you see the trilogy fight between Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder? Sorry, uh, I'd say that happens on October. The 9th. Tyson Fury, yeah, I'd say he's gonna just smoke him. To be honest, yeah, he's the better boxer. You know, I think so, and I think he's more mentally strong. And yeah, I think he's gonna win. To be honest, yeah. Are you suggesting that you'd like to cross over and do some boxing? 100. I'd love, I'd love to fight his little sister. You know what I mean? What's his, what's her name? Tommy, the fella that picks his eyebrows, plucks his eyebrows. You know what I mean? I asked for that fight already. My management team was onto his management team. I made it quite clear that I'll jump in and fight him if his opponent pulled it, which they did. And nothing got said back. He chose someone else. You know what I mean? I'm just sick of seeing all these don donkeys fighting bums and talking shit like they're the best thing and fighting. You know what I mean? We're in here fighting warriors. I'm fighting a guy that's had 40 fights. He's a veteran. I'm fighting guys that are killers. And you see these boxers and they're fighting all oh, and 126 people. That's not a joke. Do you know what I mean? That's that's fact. There's there's boxers out there that have records of zero wins and 100 losses. And these boxers are fighting them and claiming they're the next big thing. That's embarrassing, man. That's that's crazy. So, I mean, I'm gonna jump in here and uh, yeah, have a few knocks and boxing myself. You know what I mean, it'd be nice to do a boxing camp for once as well. I think it'd be a bit handier than an MMA camp, to be honest. So, can't wait to cross over and give it a go. All right, thanks. Thanks for the time, Kiefer. Good luck on Saturday. Thanks very much, everyone. Yeah, nice one.